You're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Our final conversation this morning would be an interview on the state of the nation with the leader of Afeniferi Pa'ayo Adibanjo. Take a listen. All right, our next conversation on The Breakfast this morning would be about federalism and the state of the nation. And to join us to talk about this is Pa Ayo Adibanjo. He's the leader of Afeniferi and we're in his home to discuss these vital issues in the country. Uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. Very much. Very much. All right, I want us to first of all get a sense of Afeniferi, the Yoruba nation or the Yoruba state, and what the views are about Nigeria? Oh, I see. Our view has already been known to anybody who cares to learn or to see. We want the United country under a federal system. And that has been our stance since 1950. That's our view. Anything that alters that is what we are opposed to. So are you of the opinion that Nigeria should remain as it is? Sure. Are you, uh, is Afeniferi of the opinion that Nigeria should remain as it is? Or is Afeniferi supporting the agitators of a Yoruba nation, of, the, of an old one nation? No, 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 that, don't mix it up. Afeniferi fought for the independence of this country under a federal system, under a constitution agreed to by the founding fathers, Sardana Oshokuto, Dr. Namdi Azikwe, and Chief of Bafe Mahudo. The agreement was made in London after a crisis in Nigeria in 1953. And Los Chandos, the dead Secretary of State of the Colonies, was then uh, Oliver Lituchin, when he became a lord. He summoned all these leaders to London after the crisis because the, the Constitution Mafasi gave us then was a unitary one. So when there was a crisis, and there was a motion by Chief Antonio Nauru, a member of the action group, which is a very, very, the northern people were opposed. At that time, the Sardana of Shogoto, who led the northern party, said you are going to bring from Nigeria because of the unity form of government. That was the time we used the language Araba and uh, 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 made the nine point program of separation. Which for a lot told him no, you can be together under a system that is, you can develop as your own space, which is federalism. That was what they agreed to in London following that crisis. It was at that constitutional conference, too, that the late Dr. Adam Razigo himself became a federalist. Before that conference, Azuko was a unitarist. And it was that unitarism that Saldana was opposed to and said was going to bring from Nigeria. But when she would explain to him that under a federal system, each region, each ethnic group, each federal unit, can develop at its own space with your culture, with your religion, with your ethnic um, um, fears. You can develop on your own. You don't need to absorb the other. It is that constitution they agreed to at independence. When they went to that conference, the Western region and the Eastern region were asking for self government. But the Northern region said, no, they are not ready. So the Western region and the Central region got that self government in 1957. And the Northern region got that in 1959. Because after that, they now gave the whole country to independence in 1960. That is development. And all the things that we are complaining now, because you know that, all the things that is causing confusion now, we are all settled under that constitution to the extent that. Each region had its own constitution written separately. We have autonomy on our education, on uh, agriculture, on local government, on security, on finance, with a limited function given to the center. Mm. And we are living in peace. 
revenue allocation was based on, on derivation, 50%. Even when oil was discovered, it was still 50%. But when the military came, the military caution that is the cause of this crisis. They, they, are, they set aside that constitution and impose this present constitution. That is why our son is, you don't know about this constitution. When the military now said they are going back to the barracks in 1999, they said, okay, fine. If we are going back to the barracks, send us back to the constitution which you to us. That was the beginning of the structure. At that time, Afer Vera and Adego are talking of sovereign national conference. What does it mean? Nothing else. I just say, well, we are going back. Let's agree again on how to live together and wow and what method we are going to use before we have any election. Absalom is still alive. Afer Vera then insisted we are not going to take part in that election until we have a constitution we all agree to. We are not going to have an election under this military-imposed constitution. Because this is the background of all the crisis we are having. And then Abdullah said, oh, no, I'm in a hurry. I can't wait. When you have your uh, self-government, when you have your civilian regime, you can do that. I saw him a few days ago, and I told him, this is a problem. Because you, you could do wait for us to agree before this election that is what, ever since every government is now saying we shall do it, we don't do it. And the crisis and the, and the iniquities that the military put is the one causing this crisis. The marginalization, the, uh, uh, the revenue allocation, which we now call resource control, and all that is, is all embedded in this constitution. The omnipotent powers being imposed by President Buhari is under this fraudulent constitution. That's why we describe it as a fraud. It's not our constitution. The preamble says, we the people of Nigeria. Did we make it? Are we federal? That's the question. Exactly, um, Pa Lepanjo. We're operating a federal system of government, right? But you're saying that we're not really being a federal country. I'm saying that Nigeria as a country is a federal government. It's supposed to. It's sub okay. So why, why is it that we're being called a federal government if, you know, these issues that, you know, basically define a federal system of government is not in place here? Because the way it's being run is not federal. The constitution imposed by the military in 1966 is what we are using now. It's unitary although they call it federal. So you're saying that when we say we're a federal government, yeah, it's, it's, it's simply, a fraud. It's, simply, it's a know, fraud. That is the name. Don't mention, don't patch it. We are not a federal constitution. We are not a federal country. This constitution is unitary. And we didn't make it. And you say, we the people of Nigeria, we the people, the people of the Federal Republic. No. That is the essence of the fraud. And I'll be challenging uh, the guy by Shehu and uh, Medicino to come out and say, no, I said, this is a fraud. I was expecting them to come and say that I am making a fake speech. When you are describing, on, uh, you describe of what we are not. OK, so all the governments, the civilian governments that have come into power since 1999, mm -hmm. why? Do you think it has been so difficult for all these governments to actually put a federal system of government in place in the country? Because they, 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 well, the military put them there. From uh, 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 Obasanjo, was the put they put him there. And Absalom said, when he was handing over to him, that the constitution he was running to, he didn't know what was in there because he didn't show him. I've challenged you, I've said it openly before. When we said we wanted a sovereign national conference to decide on the constitution we are going to live in, Obasan just said then that there can be no two sovereignty because he has sought to. I said, no, which sovereignty did you swear to? And the sovereignty we are talking of 
which I must explain again because people confuse it. It is not the sovereignty of the incumbent president. It is the, conference, the sovereignty of the conference we are going to summon to decide on what we are going to live together that whatever we decide at that conference is not subject to amendment by anybody, either subtraction or addition. The only thing that is subject to is uh, referendum. That is sovereignty we are talking of. That, and, and I gave an instance that the 1979 constitution that uh, 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 made, he added land use decree and all that. It's not in the constitution that he recommended. I said, we don't want such a like thing. It is what we agreed to at that conference where everybody is represented that we are going to operate. Okay, this reminds me of the 2014 National Conference. Thank you. That um, former President Goodluck Jonathan held, you know, they gathered statesmen like yourself, people from several sectors, to deliberate and see what needed to be amended in the I Constitution. I happen to be a member of that conference. Fantastic. The, another question, another issue we've been having really is, why is it that, you know, the President's ability, Jonathan's administration, could not implement, you know, the recommendations yeah, no of the time. We don't let us go there. That is the excuse that the President government is saying. It was at the tail end. That it was he who set up the thing. And don't forget all the trouble this, the opposition gave him at that time. And when he was handing over to Buari, he told him, this document is the most important document I'm handing over to you. Because I tell you, and I'm repeating, this country cannot get better composition of a conference than that conference. By quality, education, Cutting across the board, the use, the labor, the religion, everybody was represented. And we passed 600 resolutions unanimously. We had disagreement, but eventually we agreed, we agreed down. It's the most comprehensive representative constitution this country can make. Judges were there, doctors were there, survey so all this profession. And when we when we when the Bari came in and he said it was not going to do it, I said, I said, well look, don't let us waste time. If there is anything wrong, let us do this 2014 as a working work document. What do you think is wrong there that you would like to be there? Mm. If you have to, let us put it. What do you think that is there that you would like? Let us take it out and we move on. You would do it. Because I repeat, he has a private agenda. What is Buhari's agenda? But I have said it. He wants to fulanize Nigeria. That is what they don't want to hear. And, and I prove it to you. I accuse him of fulanization. He has not, you just keep quiet. And I say, why? When we say the arms men, the fulani arms men are fulani, it was you who said, no, they are not local fulani. You remember? He said they are Fulani from Gaddafi. You will remember if you have press pan. Yes. Said, okay. To me, that is worse. That is, they are foreigners who we have now accused of invading this country, raping, murdering, and getting our farmers out of their land. And you are the commander in chief to protect life and property, to protect us against foreign invasion. These are now people you claim from your own, from you that they are foreigners. Is it because they are foreigners entering the country where you are in charge of the custom, you are in charge of immigration, and even after entering, you can't arrest them because they are foreigners, and you are the commander in chief. And mind you, under this constitution, to show you how deceitful the government and propaganda is. They now say the governors should do. The governors are powerless. They have no control over the security of their state. They have no control over the police or any security apparatus. The governor cannot call the commissioner of police to the place without referring to Abuja. 
These people are armed. And when the people now say they want to protect themselves, they form a motel coup, they say you can't carry arms. That's the federal government, though. And when the, people, the foreigners came, according to you, particularly in Niger, they drive the people there from their farm and they put down their flag. The governor said it openly, you had it. Oh, you are not in this country? I am. Hey. How else do they now want to Fulanize? They say Fulani from abroad. Mm. They are now in the country, put out the flag. And the governor of the place said, hey, they are here. And Mr. President, who is the commander in chief, couldn't do anything. More so, even in Casino's own place, they are negotiating with bandits. The governor said, hey, come and, come, come and help me. And when uh, they, they started the invasion from southern Kaduna to Agatu, to Makodi, and not all say, Mr. President, I know the people who are killing me, who are maiming me, who are raping. You remember? Yes. He went to him. And the man said, they even said they are coming by the donor. What did Mr. President say? He said, go and make friends with your neighbors, with the people who are killing you. Man, you, he didn't know that could shoot aside at that time. Oh. The man who is now telling us, let the governors go back. I'm only showing you how deceitful this government is. You know the people are harmless. You ask them to attack, to protect themselves, when people are armed, and you, have, you, are, you, are, you, you disarm them. And when the former Amoteco, you remember, the, the attorney general who's a lawyer, unfortunately, I don't know how they get them, how they get scientists, they end up by quota or anything. Now say, those who are going to defend themselves should not carry arms. So when I say he has an agenda, that is my case. So also you're saying that Nigeria cannot be restructured under President Buhari's administration. Uh, by his action. It can be, if he's willing. If God enters uh, his heart. If, as I'm saying, that the, the just country in the country should pray that God should enter his heart for him to do the needful. Mm. We want to stay together. And when, when we want to confuse the issue, he says those who are coming for instruction in order to separate the country. Why? And I repeat, and I'm saying it, I felt very, and myself, we have invested in Nigeria unity more than for any, because I've been talking of uh, uh, the unity of this country when Buhari was still in primary school. So that is why the passion I have for the unity of this country can't be compared with that of Buhari. We fought for it, we stayed together, and even in 1979, by Duguri, which is now the base of this Boko Haram, I spent a whole year there campaigning for the, my party, the, 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 the UPN. If you don't want the one Nigeria, you should go from the Western region to that place. And how can anybody who is a later convert to, to, to democracy, to, to the Nigeria we built, now tell me that we should go when I say, let us have the constitution we had at independence. So you want to break the country. He has not invested in this country more than I said. So Pade Banjo, you raised a very important issue here when it comes to restructuring. Many people have different ideas of what restructuring is. My so dear, what dear, is restructuring? Let me tell you. Okay. It is the government and the people are confusing. Restructuring is not, it's not, it's not a phenomenon. And I have said it. When you say restructure, restructure to federalism. It's not a political philosophy. It is the system that, if you want to go back to, this, to federalism, you can't do it under the system. Can you? You have to research on the system. That's all. It does not mean anything when you say federalism, and people now come sometimes say, oh, something is true federalism. There is nothing like true federalism. True federalism, the word true came into this lexicon because people are calling this unitary constitution federal. 
So those who are saying, no, no, what's true federalism? It is just to differentiate it from the fake federalism you, have, you say you are having. It is it's not that there's true federalism. Federalism is federalism. All over the world, there is no Nigerian factor. Earlier this month, you know, I, I read one of your interviews in the papers. From? Earlier this month on the, Punch, on the Guardian newspaper, so you mentioned that, I'm going to quote what you said, that if any new constitution is made on the basis of federalism, that there will be no more agitation. Certainly. So you're saying that the reason why we're having uprising, you know, people saying they want to leave the country, secessionist agitations, the IPOB, the Odua nation, this and that, is because of this constitution, constitution yes. issue. Yes, I say that positively. Because under, if they understand what you are talking about, the federalism and independence, it's has the autonomy these people are asking for. It is because they don't read the constitution or they don't understand it. And to, be, to tell you, but for the fact that people have a lot of respect for me, my calling of restructuring now is no longer popular in Yoruba land. Mm. They want to break because they say, Baba, these people you are talking to, they won't hear. Let them break away. They won't, they won't restructure to, to have our autonomy. There's no point. The same thing with uh, uh, in America. No? He says it's, it's circumcised. But if they have the autonomy, they control their police, they control their local government, education, health, and everything. Only, only foreign affairs, commerce, and shipping. We be the federal government. Nobody will complain about anything if they understand federalism to be that. These people quiet, quiet, quiet. And then I can tell them, no, go sit down. You don't need it. We have got our independence. And we have had it before. Before independence, this constitution that we had, a past Echi region is so autonomous. The constitution is made separately. They have their own foreign embassy in London. If they want to do anything, they don't have to go to the colonial office or federal office. They go to their office. Western region had its own 15A Kensington Palace Garden in, in, in London. That is where I got married in 1960. So I know what I'm talking about. All the students want to go to university abroad, they don't go to the federal government. And when the Western Regional Government the whole law, uh, uh, instituted scholarship, 200 scholarships every year, it was our embassy in London that was looking for the university abroad, not the federal government. We are autonomous, agriculture, local government. Um, uh, we say what you like. And anything that was not as located to the federal government, the federal part is in the region. So what would they come? Why would they, why would they be clamoring for separation? So, if we're saying that in this present administration, it's unlikely. Mm. For, if you're saying that it's unlikely for us to have a restructuring with this present administration, if, then if it's going to confuse them, go back to federalism. That restructuring is confusing them. They are making it, they are using it to confuse people. Mm -hmm. All we are saying, go back to federalism. And I'm saying, if you go back to federalism without the amendment of Nigeria in the way it is done all over the world, there will be no agitation for the session. Okay. So now that, you know, that's yet to happen, we're yet to return to federalism, mm -hmm. right? These agitations we're having from the southeast, from the northern part of the country, from, from you know, the Yoruba nation, is that the answer? And what might these secessionist agitation, especially for this Odua nation, what might it do to the country and our peace and unity? You are repeating the same thing. Well, I say, the moment you have that federalism, that will die. Because they want autonomy, they want independence. I'm saying in the absence of that uh -huh. right now, there are people are saying they want their own Yoruba nation, mm -hmm. right? Don't say in the absence of that. Don't talk about reaction. Talk about the action that causes the reaction. Why are they having their Ududua? Why do they want separation? I'm telling you. Hmm. They say this government is oppressing them under the ministry. They want a government of their own. 
What do you mean by succession? The question to be on their own. And I say you can have what you want under succession. You can have it under a federal system, which is under a system that is federal. Because you have the autonomy of anything that you want. That's what you want. Still talking about Nigeria, the president has, you know, been speaking about open grazing and how the southern governors reacted to this by banning open grazing in their states. But the reaction of the president is that, you know, grazing routes would be um, revitalized and basically opposing the stance of the 17 southern governors to open grazing. So what do you think the rationale is, you know, what the president might have been thinking? when he opposed the ban on open grazing and said that the Attorney General of the Federation should bring back the Gazette of the First Republic and re revitalize grazing routes in Nigeria. That was confirmed by accusation of him that doesn't want this country to stay together. And then I've accused him before, you can understand his interest. He has 500 cows. That's why he's protecting the food announcement. That's why he doesn't want anything to touch them. That's why he says, if you ask the Fulani men to go, you ask all the Fulani people to go, which is not true. It is the Fulani men which have been proved to be raping, kidnapping, killing, depriving our farmers of their land. Those are the people who have to go. We have not had that good to go, who has employed many people in our country, given employment. And you are comparing that with the people who are selling share pass in the north. And I say, okay, if there are people who sell it pair pass, either Ibo or Yoruba or yours, raping your women, kidnapping them, killing them, send them out. Don't generalize. We are not generalizing of the Fulani. I have a lot of Fulani friends. Then go there, my personal friend, we share the same bad day. How can I ask him to go after giving employment to my people? He's developing our economy. And the spare part people do not are developing your economy. If even they leave, you will suffer. They like, don't know how someone will sell his spare parts. So don't let us see ourselves. We are specific about the full anyone in, the, in our bush, turning our bush into killing, um, kidnapping people. You don't address that, then you confuse issue. You want to change the narrative. It's not right. So That's why I say he has a private agenda. So what do you think, you know, beyond the Buhari administration, right? Because in 2023, someone else will step into power. After changing this constitution. Hopefully. So beyond the Buhari administration. May I repeat? Niger no, Yoruba land will not stay in Nigeria under this constitution. Get it clear. We will not be in Nigeria under this oppressive, imposed constitution. We said, give us the constitution that we should agree to stay together. Why should that be a problem? And mind you, I refer him to the founding fathers, Saudana, Azikwe, Aulo. And I pose the question, is Buhari more intelligent than Saudana? Is he more full and neat than Saudana? Or why is he opposed to what his father did? Or if that is so, tell us what is wrong with that constitution. And he say, all right, okay, if you don't want that, let us sit down and agree on one. You say, no. It is this imposed constitution you want to impose on one. It will not work. It's simple as it is. It does not work. A democracy is a government of the people by the people. It's not a government by the military. Muslim, Muslim, section or something. And it is, it is an empirical law. In any country with multi-ethnic, multi-religious, multi, uh, uh, multi, multi religious multicultural, you have a federal constitution where every unit will develop at its own space. That is what we are asking for. Why okay. should that be a problem to a fair-minded person? If that person is not, is, not, is not having a private agenda, as I say. Okay. Looking 
towards the next general elections, the next presidential elections in Nigeria, would you want or would the Afeniferi want a Yoruba president come 2023? My dear, by the time we settle the constitution, I will know where it should go. Not under the dubious position. I don't support a constitution where a section of the country will be saying, well, I like you come. It's a rotation something. No. By the time we make our constitution, we decide there how the constituency will go. It will be a constitutional right of every member of the unit of the federation. It is not going to be a favor by, by a section of the country. Oh, yes, I like you. You can have it. If you, if you come to me, if you, no. We are together because we want to, we want to, we want to uh, uh, enjoy the, the economy of scale. There's unity, there's an advantage in, in a big country. But you'll be a big country where you are a slave. We don't want the unity of the horse and the rider where a section of the country will be the rider and we'll be the horse. No. Okay. That is what that is what Buhari is trying to do. It will not work. That is why I say it's number one enemy of Nigerian unity. To oppress a section of the country. You are going to be dictating what times you are going to come? I think this is a question of mutual advantage. Hmm. Still on the 2023 question, who would the Afeni Ferry as a group be looking to support for the presidency? For? For the presidency in 2023. After, when I know the constitution we are under. So I, 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 don't right. do, I don't deal with speculation. Today now, the Yoruba position is we are there agree on the constitution or to dictate to Israel. So if by 2023 there is no new constitution in Nigeria, what's going to happen? I don't think this country will survive 2023 if there is no new constitution. That's my view. Why do you think so? It's obvious. The people I'm suppressing in Yoruba land now for Dudua, I have no reason to stop them again. I'm only stopping them that I know you don't have to succeed, you don't have to go. There is a constitution that can bind us together and everybody will be autonomous. And you say you don't want that. That's what you people should consider. But I can I, foresee how this will play out, just mm -hmm. the way it, I mean, I can foresee how this agitate, agitation for a Yoruba nation will play out, just as it is in the Southeast. Because the federal government will undoubtedly clamp down on those people and there will be bloodshed. I mean, isn't, isn't that the likelihood? Oh, well, uh, there, there you should draw the conclusion. If somebody says he want peace, you know, those of us who are asking for social liberalism, we are the peaceful people. Those who are asking for session, they are the people who are tired. We are not looking at that question. And we are telling Buhari, no. These people who, are, who want to break away by force, the Namkan and others, there's a way to pacify them. Let us agree on the constitution to live together. They will stop. Why does he not pursue that line? If he means well. Hmm. If you are not saying, accept, accept my constitution, that I, I, I will pounce on you. That's not fair. You are supposed to be the father of the nation. You are beating me, you don't want me to cry. You are beating me, I say, no, this is what I want. The child is crying. The father they stop, I say, no, I want bread, bread, bread. You give me bread, I stop. You don't give me bread, you give him stone. He continues to cry. He say, no, you don't cry. Who is the correct person? Okay, so my, my final question, um, Pa Adibanjo, will be about the recent interview that the president granted to a TV station. Yes. The recent interview that the president granted to a TV station and his comments specifically about the Southeast. He said that even in a tweet, Buhari said he would treat Nigerians in the way they understand in reference to the Southeast and talking about them saying that they're like a dot in a circle. What do you think about that? Well, the, what I've been saying is I was thinking about it. I have told you he doesn't like these standards. He doesn't want Nigeria to be together. He has a private agenda. 
That is why he's doing everything that will not put them together. How can you say a member of a unit of the Federation who are very powerful ethnic group in the Federation, you treat them like that? And they are complaining that, oh, you marginalize us, that every important position, we are not there. You don't say, all right, okay, what's your problem? In fact, if you want that is in there, you take it out and put your ethnic group. All the security architecture in the country is dominated by the Northerners. If you know that, who is in custom? Who is in immigration? Who is the Inspector General of Police? Chief of the Army, Chief of the Navy, Chief of the Air Force? That is the question. And all these years, people have been shouting, this is a problem, this is a problem. Which one has he made an effort to rectify? He just turned the blind eye. He did the impurity. What can you do? I have, I have, I have power of uh, uh, shot in my hand. If you, if, you, if you raise a word, I know how to deal with you. That's what he said. Mm. Wow. So if you, you see, it may not be too good to be hearing, but the saying is valid. Those who make peaceful change impossible make violent change inevitable. It is not a qualification for anything. You are saying these people are violent. We are, we, we are appealing to know they won't be violent if you do this. And what we ask you to, you, you to do is not unlawful. It's what we have had before we come together. If you are sincere, if you are honest about this, why don't you agree to that? No, don't blame them. We will stop them. We just let them come together. If so many people in here at all, all the, if right now, if he's serious, asking the governor to go and take care of the area, why will we not give them power of, over their security? If he does that today, all this thing will stop. Hmm. And even the federal police, let them be the, all federal police in this region, be the indigenous of that region. That is why, see, all the police and army are sent to this now. They are not the indigenous of the place. That's why they are killing them like fowls. That's my reason. And that's why we tell you, this is here. That is the weapon he has that is boasting of. He will send soldiers there. Do you think if there are federal soldiers who are Igbo, who are Hispanics, they will kill themselves? We have had the experience during a bacha after the you or something. A bacha killed many of us in Yoruba land. Not by the Yoruba the soldiers or policemen, by the policemen and the, who are from the north. Under the guise of federal, of federal police. This is what people are opposing. This is what we are objecting to. Thank you very much, Pa Ayo Adibanjo. It's been you know, a very insightful time speaking to you, hearing from you, and you know, expressing the views of the Afeniferi and the Yoruba people as it concerns our nation and the key issues of restructuring and federalism. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. And that's it here on the conversation with Pa Ayo Adebanjo, the leader of the Afeni Ferry uh, Social Political Group in Yoruba Land. And uh, we'll take a break here and return to continue the conversation on The Breakfast.